Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rob Sutton with Bike198, and today I want to talk about whether or not Asian manufacturing of carbon frames, whether it be from China or Taiwan, actually killed off part of the mountain biking industry. So let's get at it. So I guess I should kind of give some context here. What actually sparked me off of thinking about this idea, and it has been bounced around a lot in a lot of different areas, is I was browsing around MTBR the other day and I happened to just jump into the Turner Forum. Now I've owned several different Turners in the past. They used to be one of my favorite bikes and my dream builds, you know, that I finally got to have after seeing them on the cover of Mountain Bike Action for so long. And Turner used to have some of the most die-hard Turner homers that would buy their bikes over and over and over again, not even looking at other brands. And then when I went on MTBR, where it used to be a super active forum in the Turner section, it was a ghost town. There's basically no one there other than posts asking where everyone was. So what happened with these brands like Turner, Ventana, Ellsworth, and others that you used to see at your trailheads all the time and used to hear a lot about, but now no longer see anymore? I have several different ideas and let's get into it. What basically happened here was a changing of the guard when carbon manufacturing came out in full swing out of different parts of Asia, including Taiwan and China. There were new brands stepping up to the plate and taking advantage of this new technology very quickly. One of the first ones really was Ibis and some others that came out with full carbon lines right away. They were able to do things with the design that you just couldn't do with aluminum. So you had new competition in the market and while these aluminum frame manufacturers that were in a boutique side of the business, they were updating their suspension designs and doing some other things to kind of revitalize certain models, but they were sticking to what they knew and that was aluminum, low production, high end frames. When you fast forward to now, aluminum has really taken over more of the bottom end of the market. If they have aluminum offerings, those are their entry level bikes, and then they move up to carbon bikes as it gets into the more boutique side of the business. Even some of the brands like Gorilla Gravity, who started off making aluminum bikes, is now making carbon because I think they realized that same thing as well. If you're going to charge a premium for your frames and full bikes, it has to be in that carbon lineup. With the introduction of large-scale Asian manufacturing, it also changed how bike manufacturers did business. They aren't so much bike manufacturers anymore. What they are is design and marketing firms, and they come up with their design, and then it is sourced over in Asia. What this has done is actually lowered the barrier of entry into making mountain bikes. You can now source those out of Asia and do it pretty easily. So what you end up being really good at is the marketing and the design aspect of your bikes themselves. I mean, think about it. Now you don't have to have welders, you don't have to have paint lines, you don't have to pay for healthcare for all those people. All you have are designers and marketing people in your office, and then they're sourced overseas. And while yes, carbon molds can be very expensive, that can also be amortized into the cost of the frame. So you're not paying all that up front. So these other companies that were jumping into the market and taking advantage of that Asian manufacturing had a lot lower upfront cost and operating cost to get their bikes out the door. This allowed for companies like YT bikes and others that were able to go direct to consumer to pop up as well. One of the other things you started seeing too is you very rarely see people buy frame only anymore. I remember all of my Turners and Ventanas, I bought those frame only and then built them up myself. Not as many people are doing that these days. Even some of the more boutique brands that we have today, they're selling full bikes. I don't think people want to source each individual part like they used to. And if they do, they buy the full bike and then switch out a part here and there. They're not building it up from scratch anymore. So these boutique aluminum frame builders back in the past, their primary business was selling frame only. They weren't sourcing a bunch of components all the time and building up full bikes to ship to customers. The other thing I have to wonder too is, did some of these brands just retire? Most of these were small businesses owned by one guy. A lot of their brand rode on their name and their reputation, and they've been doing it a really long time. Was it just time to let the new guard come in and go enjoy life for a little bit and not have to worry about it anymore? Unless you have a private equity firm that's interested in buying your brand and you're even interested in selling it to begin with, like Santa Cruz did, do you really want to be doing this into your 60s, 70s, and 80s? Maybe they accomplished everything they were looking at doing and now it's time to rest. And sometimes it's just a changing in the guard in the industry when you know the older brands are just ready to let the new ones take over and they can just go ride their bike on weekends and not worry about customer service, running a business, and everything else. Especially lately, as, as popular and as expensive as mountain biking has gotten, it has invited in a lot of private equity firms, so competition is really tough right now. There also is a lot of pressure to have something new every year. So for these smaller companies that are privately owned, there's a lot of pressure to have some new bike every year, year after year. 
and maybe just the amount of money it takes to keep up with that cycle. And maybe that constant pressure and stress has made some of these companies just look at doing other things. So for whatever reason it may be, the mountain biking industry looks a lot different these days. Most of the production is brought in from overseas. All the high-end stuff is carbon, all the lower stuff is aluminum. Our days of the high-end aluminum market are pretty much a thing of the past. And it's been slowly going over the past couple of years, but it has really ramped up over the past five to seven. The old school guy in me is kind of sad. I like to see the old Ventanas and turns on the trail. I used to love building up my bikes from frame only, but that's just not what the market is anymore. This coming up generation will know nothing about that. They won't have that like aha moment when you finally got to afford the bike that you've been seeing on the cover of magazines for forever. Everything's online now and it's a lot different scenario than when we first started riding, but you know, they'll probably have their own thing later on going, hey, it was not like this back in the past either. It isn't all negative though. We have some of the most capable, best riding bikes we have ever had in mountain biking. There are more people out mountain biking now than ever before. So some of this technology and change in manufacturing has actually resulted in some really great things for mountain biking. There are also fresh brands out there pushing innovation and business practices within the mountain biking industry, which is really exciting. And we have more options than we have ever had before, but I will miss my aluminum boutique frames. So I wanna hear what you guys think. Do you agree with what I said about the market and how Asian manufacturing has changed mountain biking? I wanna hear your comments down in the comment section below. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and reviews and tutorials in the future. And until then, on to the next one. Thanks guys, see ya.